I love that song. I do too. <laughs> it's it's the shorter version now. I well, I kind of like the shortened version. The long one's good. If if I'm in the other room and I know, oh, I better hurry. Potty Mouse is on. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> if we're well, live. No, more so, Lisa though. Well, if we're live and, and we're working yeah. towards that. So, folks, you probably noticed uh, before we'll get into what John wanted to talk about, which has something to do with a meat market. I mean. Whatever. I don't know. It's John. It's John. Whatever. Anyway, you know, we're, we're trying a few new things. I, I think we had mentioned in the last episode that we've moved over to Riverside.fm, which if you're interested in uh, in doing your own podcast, there is a link in all of our show notes linking to our page on Riverside FM. So if you want to get started with them, that would be really helpful to us as well as hopefully to you for wanting to start a podcast. But that said, that allows us to do a lot more things, including at some point going live. So I would love to be able to, but of course I am learning and I'm learning on the fly instead of trying to do it myself when, you know, I have, cause I have so much time when I'm not doing the podcast. Uh, I am learning on the fly on how we, how we can transition. And right now I'm trying it without the, the front bumpers with the, the pictures and just with the music and, and to see if it's uh, how it works and see if we can, I don't even know if we can do a video in front without editing. My goal though, John, is to be semi live, live to tape. Yeah. You know, so so no. we're, I don't have to edit. That would be my goal. And that makes things a lot faster and a lot easier. And maybe if that happens, then we can do more content. You know, maybe we'll start producing twice a week or, you know, go crazy and, and actually start making money on the podcast. What? And only produce this podcast and a bunch of others on the Roasted Pixel Network. Wow. You Roasted are. Roasted Pixel Podcast Network. You are talking. You're just sounding like uh, Tom Hanks on that thing you do. <laughs> exactly. Well, you know, the Playtone was... Galaxy. Exactly. And now he owns Playtone. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's awesome. He willed it into existence. That's well, how I want to will this podcast. After four years, I'm going to will it into existence. <laughs> it's about time. What has yep. been the holdup, mister? Oh, you oh, know. That work that thing. Work thing. Yeah. Man. Well, we wouldn't oh, have man. anything to talk about if we didn't have work, though. That's an excellent point. And, and so, yeah, I mean, there are other things we could do to uh, come up with content ideas. but Like meat markets? Like meat markets, which is what we did today. So we have uh, you. some of you uh, longer-term listeners have met my friend Matt Pissner. He and uh, his wife, Carrie, are coming in to uh, visit us in Florida this Nice. Week. And, yeah, so we're psyched about it. But Lisa... Uh, has perfected making filet mignon at home. And so uh, the key is, obviously, to start, you have to have a really quality cut of meat. And so we usually seek out meat markets that are the popular ones in the area and so on when we go somewhere else. And we found this German meat market. Sadly, they are uh, (laughs) bereft with... I think that's correct. Um, all sorts of German things in the store. So it's a little kind of a shop. And I say sadly because I can't leave without buying some. These are like uh, lemon wafer yeah. candies. And Manor, they're, they're Bavarian, fantastic. Or Vienna. Yeah, See, Austrian. I probably, uh, I would leave with, I, I'm sure they have uh, Harry Bow gummy bears. Or a Harry bunch. Bow, yeah. Yes. I would probably several. leave with five pound bags of those. We've talked about the sugar-free ones. Yes. Have you? Have you? No. Read I haven't the been able to find them. Amazon I, I, ones. Oh no. Well, I yeah. I, I hesitate because my yeah. addiction is so <laughs> uh, prevalent. Well, you don't that... do the sugar-free ones. No. No. Uh-uh, yeah. No. Actually, and you I... know, it's it's funny. Completely off the subject. We'll get back to it in just a second. I, I know that surprises everybody that I want I to go off on a yeah. tangent. What? But Jennifer can't eat sugar, so we actually I, I made her well. Peyton and I, a few weeks ago, went out for donuts, and Jen wanted some, but of course she can't have them because they're super sugary. Yeah. So we, I made her a sugar-free cake with sugar-free frosting, huh. and it was good, but I tasted it, and I'm like, oh, God. Oh, man. Yeah, it was not – it missed the sugar. I like oh, the taste of sugar. The, sure. It's almost too sweet with the non-sweetener sweeters. Sweeteners. Oh, right, yeah. right. So, so what, anyway, did, back, what did Jen think of it? Oh, she loved it. She ate the whole thing. Oh, Not she did. Sitting. She liked yeah. it. Okay. The yeah. only problem that I, <laughs> Lisa and I went, I think we were on vacation someplace or whatever. We're trying to watch sugar intake, and and we should do that anyway. Um, and I watch I, it go into my mouth. Yeah, I know. But we went to a, 
uh, Walgreens or something like that and picked out these, not a sponsor, picked out <laughs> these, uh, we said, oh, this is awesome. It's Ghirardelli chocolate. I think it was Ghirardelli sugar free. And I'm going, well, this is, per- this is like a dream. And so we, uh, we got back to the hotel and I had a nice dinner and started eating these sugar free chocolates and they were delicious. I mean, they were really good. And then later that night, she looks at me and she says, how, how's your stomach (laughs) said, and I said, and I said, (laughs) (laughs) it was terrible. And we were just like, but the next morning we're, we're both never. Ever again? Are we getting sugar-free chocolate? Are you sure it was that it was the oh. name on the chocolate box? X Lax? No, it may have been. But then at least there would have been an outcome. There was no outcome other than the the John. I really don't want to talk band. about outcomes. Yeah, the marching. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so that was uh, um, that was what that was. Anyway, so there is the Haribo, the sugar-free stuff has a very similar reaction in some really? people. That's what I'll say. So, yes. you know, you're doing the, the uh, fart songs, the yes. fart uh, band. Yes. Made me think of how, you know how old people, they, they forget <laughs> that they, they fart, and when they're walking, it's just every once in a while you get a... <laughs> I mean they forget well i don't know because they don't seem to care it's either yeah. that they just don't hear it they don't feel it yeah. they don't care yeah. but old people tend to do that i was when you said that all i pictured was a a long line like six or seven old people walking in a line and each one having a different tenor to their their farts and it just being the old person fart band opfp oh um, opfp opfp i'm gonna write that one down and Lisa could tell you way more about this because, so maybe it's time for us to have our wives on again. Uh, she used to work uh, years ago at a retirement facility, and so they had independent living and and uh, uh, skilled nursing and things like that. Mm-hmm. And these folks, they were uh, all elderly people, and... Um, in an old folks home? Uh, you no. Call it an old folks home. Hey, welcome to the old folks home. Well, That's what they call like it. I qualify. They do not. A, it's a, independent a, living. Yeah, they, do you really think the people that live? It's kind of like the conversations we have with dealers when we're looking, looking at their website. They want to put pre-owned everywhere. <laughs> yeah. How many customers do you really think come to you and go, I'd like to look at pre-owned vehicles? They I'd like never. To, I'm really... Yeah. yeah, they always search for used. You're exactly. absolutely right, and that exactly. is correct. But nobody searches in Google for old folks homes. <laughs> I do. I would. You do really? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, you're if not... I was looking one up. I, that's what It'll I would. It'll be another look five out. years before you're ready. Probably four, maybe Whatever. four. Um, yeah. So anyway, we Lisa would people would walk down the hall and it would go to the next level. It wasn't just that; it was there was more. <laughs> so farting on the next level. Yes. What would that be, Nick? I have no idea. Yes, it's something that it's, yeah, pretty disgusting. Anyway, that was very common in the halls. <laughs> would be a shark. <laughs> yeah, and then some probably. Um, <laughs> so anyway, yeah, let's move on from that because it was, uh, that was the bass, brass band that she, she dealt with. Anyway, the German <laughs> meat marketplace, and they really yeah. have these uh, Eastern European ladies who work there. They're all oh, females. nice. And they're just wonderful. They're they're so fun and funny. They have a really cool way of checking you out, though. There are probably six plastic baskets, and they're by the cashier's counter. And they put your order, whatever you order, into the basket, and they have these cute names on them. I think mine today was a pineapple or palm tree or something like that. And they have these Floridian names on all of them. So, okay, your basket is pineapple and you tell her when you go okay thank you you're you're welcome next <laughs> so they're very very regimented and how they yes how they go through it and that's then you go up and pay hi um uh, i'm pineapple <laughs> yeah <laughs> they, you know look at you kind of funny and you pay for your pineapple basket which i thought it's a really cool idea and it's the meat is incredible so we got a full tenderloin and it wasn't a you know massive we got a a cut of a tenderloin and she will slice them uh into steaks individual steaks and then 
She just has it down to a science how to cook it. It's a Gordon Ramsay thing, and okay. it's the best fillet consistently I've ever had. Mm. Restaurant or still not. still waiting for an invitation. Well, come on, let's go get your butt here. Our yeah, next, our next face hot, to face is going to be September. I know if it's as hot there, if it's even close to as hot there as it is here right now. It's no hotter there. Out. It's hotter. Is there. it really? Yeah. yeah What's your temp today? Ninety-eight. Something like that. Yeah, it's I mean, not been are, fun. It's not been are, fun. Um, we are um, uh, ninety-one. Last refresh. Still too hot for me. I was well, good. I was. I was. It was acceptable in the eighties. Perfect yeah. temperature anywhere between seventy-two and seventy-nine. I'm perfectly happy. Yeah. Anything above that, I'm miserable, and I am. Mis- we actually had a warning. This week, several times from the power company, oh, where boy. they've been sending it out everywhere, saying, "Please, you know, don't set your." There was one that came out that said, "Don't set your thermostat below seventy-eight degrees." Mm-hmm. I'm like, "Have you ever been in my house at seventy-eight degrees? <laughs> I can barely keep it at seventy-five and be comfortable, wow. and I'm naked at that point." Well, thank you for that. You're welcome. I just yeah. thought I'd throw that out there. Yeah, appreciate that. Yeah. No Checking one else in the house likes it either. I- I'm naked, and I'm searching for old folks' homes. Right, right. Yeah, and I'm <laughs> naked right now from the waist down, but I thought yeah. I'd wear a shirt for this episode. We are very happy about that. I know, I know. In case our viewers can't see, it is actually a potty mouse shirt. It is a potty mouse. It's, yeah. it, I wear it so much that it's worn off, which I, so I'm nice. going to have to get a new one. Yeah, um, you should. Yeah. Well, I have my polo, which I do wear. I do, too. I don't wear mine that often. Cause they're, no, because I want to keep it nice. I've got two of them. They're candidly kind of thick, though. Yes. And so, and I like that from a from a durability standpoint, but not from a floridability standpoint. Yeah, floridability <laughs> is, it's, yeah, that's a really good point. It's, but the other place that you turned me on to, this is like an advertisement uh, podcast today. Is not a the sponsor. 32, the 32 Below thing? 32 Cool. Cool. Uh, yep. I love them. Oh, yeah. And Fantastic. talk about reasonable prices. Yes. And, Oh my gosh! And their um, their polos are great. Yeah. Oh yeah. Very I have, breathable I actually, and light. <laughs> I have it pulled up right now. I have a uh, <laughs> shopping cart full. I'm up. At, and for those of you who don't know, <laughs> Thirty Two Cool has very inexpensive clothing, and you can pick it up at Costco as well. But I have oh. I order it from their website, and right now I have sixty seven dollars worth of clothes. And that's a boatload of clothes. That's a boatload of clothes. It is. Yeah, and they yeah. make good pants. Like I, I wear their pants for hiking because they're, they're kind of hiking, hiking pants. Okay. Uh, tech or not texture, but feeling. Um, yeah, I just got and, the, some shorts, uh, like okay. a dress short type things. Right. Because <laughs> Lisa gets tired of me. It's the it's the dude who wears whatever he wants to every day. Hence the black t shirt, the and I it, cargo shorts, and they're uh-huh. like down by my knee or below my knee. And she's like, <laughs> "Come on." <laughs> And flip flops. Get out of the nineties. Because it's Florida. Hey, they're comfy. And I know. Every time I wear a different color shirt, and if I, I, I don't know, we go out to eat or I, and I spit up on myself or whatever, it's, <laughs> so, it's always... John. If, if that's happening, we might need to have a conversation, buddy. <laughs> Searching for old folks' homes. <laughs> exactly. Uh, and so, it, but it'll. It, it always gets on when I'm wearing a gray shirt, but if it's a black shirt, if I happen to, oh gosh, I got a little water on me or something. Yeah, ah, well, nobody you, knows. To, to your point, when we before we started the podcast, I'm looking at the camera. I'm not looking at my shirt, but right here. And John said, "Never say potty in the same <laughs> sentence as something on my shirt." But I meant p o d d i. I'm like, oh, I must have spilled something on my shirt. Maybe I'm sweating because I was actually the whole conversation started because I turned the air, air up. <laughs> um, but then I look down, and it's actually the words that are coming off. It, this is where potty used to be on my shirt. Oh. And, but, but in the camera, it looks like a wet spot. It's, uh, but it's not. No, it's, it's See, potty had, on my shirt. If you, had, <laughs> if you would have had your black potty mouse T-shirt on, no one would know. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. No, I, I do. So this is the thin one. So this is I, – I wear this. I have one other shirt that's very similar. It's actually a NASA shirt that I got from hmm. – um, from uh, Old Navy, and then I have all my 32 Cools, which are T-shirts, and I also have the, the polos, Polos, yeah. and I wear the shorts all the time, too, and it's just nice and cool. It helps. Well, helps it, quite it a bit. does. It really does, and it's and that's what's, you know, it, 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 the weather you're having right now, we will have for three or four months, yeah. so that's fine. It's, it, it's whatever you get used to. Last night, our air conditioning went off, and I'm sitting on the couch, and I'm like, 
uh, why am I perspiring all of us? We've got the fans, you know, ceiling fans in every room, so it's no big deal. But uh, Lisa goes, is it warm? And then she looks, and it's 81 degrees in here. What the heck? So we called the landlord, and, hey, this okay. They had a guy, 10 p.m., the guy oh, knocks on the door. And I had texted him at about 8.30, and I said, okay, you know what? It's cooling off. It seems like the air is, is reengaging, and so that's fine. You don't have to come. Okay, I'll let him know in the office. 10 p.m. Knock, knock, knock. Seriously? And I'm not the 1 a.m. guy that, oh, I'll just sit up all night and sleep till 10 or, you know, I'm yeah. going to be up at 5 no matter what. And so, you know, 10 o'clock, I answered the door. I knew it was him. And I said, I just texted Adam. I'm Adam. Well, why did you tell me you were going <laughs> to? Wow. You've been drinking, Adam? Probably. And that's, yeah, kind of what I anticipated. Anyway, he went out and checked the unit, and he says, yeah, it just froze up because it froze up. Interesting use of words. Uh, froze up because it was so hot out and whatever. Which the, means the I've been was, told exactly the refrigerant's leaking, yeah. and that's why it freezes up. And it's an so, old one, and it's a rental, and I don't care. There you go. I yeah, we, don't care. We have, so I, I have a dilemma right now because I, I think we've shared this before. One Because every year it seems like I have to fix one of the units on the house, whether it's heat or air. Something has gone out. So <laughs> the heat been, never goes out in the summer. Have you noticed It that? never goes out in the summer, strangely <laughs> enough. But the, uh, the air conditioning in the bonus room, which is where we watch TV, yeah. is out again. So something's wrong with you the You have a separate the, unit? Yeah, we have so we okay. have one on the main floor. We have another unit on the second floor, which also heats and cools the third floor where I am in my office, which is it's a small room. I, I you know it, what you see pretty much is it. Uh, I might have three feet to my right, and you know the stairs are to my left, so it's not a huge room. So there's no reason to have a split unit up here. But then that we have a mini split in the bonus room. Oh, okay. Which used to be connected to the main system because it still has the vents in the ceiling, but they disconnected it at some point. I don't – probably for the same reason that I, I struggle in this room as well because there's no thermostat. So well, you're upstairs, though. I'm, yeah. Yep. Yeah. And there's no thermostat on this floor. So the thermostat is on the second Got it. floor. Got it. So when it hits whatever temperature it is, 74, it's going to be 90 up here before it kicks <laughs> on again. So right. anyway <laughs> – the air is out in the bonus room, and I, I'm debating whether to get it fixed or not because ah. Peyton, when she's not doing school, spends most of her time watching television or playing video games, which is a normal kid thing, but I want her sure. to get out and do other things because Peyton's, Peyton's ADHD. Once she's set, she is there all day, and she becomes sure. a bear. Yeah. It's horrible to deal with, and even with the rule I had, which was no TV until after noon. Yeah. Uh, no going up into the bonus room, actually, until afternoon. Because mm -hmm. she likes to go up there and read, too. Read. Mm -hmm. I'm putting mm -hmm. quotes in the air. Uh -huh. She's sneaking something, usually, <laughs> like technology. We have yes. a little addiction to technology. Anyway, um, <laughs> so it's very uncomfortable to sit up there, especially during the day. So yep. my debate is, do I get it fixed so it's comfortable up there so I can go and watch TV, which is only at night when I'm home, mm -hmm. which is not very often. Mm -hmm. Or do I leave it unfixed for the summer, get it fixed at the end of summer so it's ready for next year? So and it's a sweatshop. Dissuade, yeah, dissuade Peyton from going up and watching television. She's going to start teaching a Bikram yoga class in their hot exactly, yoga. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, well, and the TV we have up there is old. It's an old LED, L LCD, rather. Mm -hmm. So that actually heats the room even more. So it, oh. it might be 90 up there <laughs> right. now, but if she watches TV for an hour, it's going to be 100. <laughs> Will that? So the question is, will that dissuade her? Right now, from... it's not. She was up there when I before I came up here. <laughs> wow! And it's not working. The it's not working. not working. Yeah, <laughs> it's got the ceiling fans going at full blast. Yeah, yeah. We have a fan at the bottom of the stairs blowing cold air up. Yeah. <laughs> the only other problem is if we're not home, if no one's home, the dogs are up there in their kennel, oh. and I don't want them to suffer. Right, Peyton can suffer. They can't <laughs> well, Peyton can leave there unless I, you're my misunderstanding and you have her in a kennel, too. Yeah, sometimes I wish I could. Um, <laughs> you know, preteen and all. Well, wow. So, no, that's my biggest dilemma. I don't know. Mm. And the other thing is if I have to get this thing fixed again, I probably would just go ahead and get a new split unit because mm. it seems like I've had to fix it every single season, not just every single year, so every wow. single season. I've had to get this thing fixed. And and was it existing when you when I bought the house? Bought yeah. the place. Okay. Yeah. 
And it's not that it doesn't seem that old. I mean, the outside unit, the fan unit's brand yeah. new. That's only a year and a half, two years old now. So one that's on the ground, you mean? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. So I, who knows? We, and we were we were considering that, and I think you and I talked about it um, in the our garage that we're building. Oh, and by the way, hold on. I got a. Oh, you got ah. pictures? I just have one, so I won't bore you. This is my. Oh, it's like he has a new baby. Um, we have one from today when we drove by, and uh, this is a huge deal. Wow. We have a roof on our house. That's incredible. Yeah, isn't that awesome? That's the best-looking trash um, <laughs> container yeah. I've ever seen. I, I like the trash. I'm actually, I think we're going to keep the dumpster. Uh, That'd be, uh, be it nice. Just does. It's a good it, color. It adds a lot, and then we don't have to it worry does. about landscaping in the front. Well, and, and with the, the brick that you chose, it just kind of makes everything pop. <laughs> Us. And we can trash day. We can just whip crap out of the garage. Right, right. And it'd be fun <laughs> watching the truck try to pick it up. And dump it. <laughs> yes, it would be fun. <laughs> what the heck? <laughs> anyway, so yeah, we're uh, we are delighted, and we and went and saw the builder today too, and uh, and I had to send him on Friday kind of a nasty email. Oh no, and uh, it, it wasn't nasty. I did use the word damn though for full. Uh, Full okay. disclosure. Well, did you um, explain you're from Wisconsin and this is <laughs> what it is? Well, that was. I told my mom, and I said, uh, I said I used the lowest uh, word of the day, the D word. <laughs> I seriously, if my mom, when we were growing up, ever said "damn," mm -hmm. we were terrified. Oh, really? Absolutely terrified, and uh, I still remember. One time in particular when we had broken a lamp or something like that. And she did the infamous, this is why we can't have nice things. And then she looked and, and she said, damn it. She was so frustrated. And we're all like, <laughs> <laughs> scared to death. I bet. She never swore. Isn't and that so isn't it, it funny, funny how you have those little things? <laughs> oh my gosh! I mean, my yeah. mom could yell at me, scream at me, call me names, which I never let her live down. Uh, <laughs> you could do all that stuff, and I wouldn't care. Mm. But the minute she gave me that look, it was just that look. It was you that, knew it though. Oh, I knew I was in trouble. Yeah. <laughs> she didn't have to say a word. Actually, it was scarier when she didn't say a word. Right, right, exactly. Oh, my not gosh. that I got in trouble all that often, but still, it was. Yeah. You know, it was I'm like sure the, it was once a week, huh? Once a week. Uh, no, actually, I was a, I, I was probably just off in my own world and never never really realized that I was getting in trouble at any point. That's <laughs> well, pretty much me. That's, as a, that's yeah. changed. Now, yeah, you, now I'm a much more aware. Now I think everyone's mad at me no matter what. <laughs> that's a lot better. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Just assuming. I'd rather. I think I'd rather be oblivious. I kind of miss being oblivious to things. Yeah, yeah. oblivity, oblivity. Oblivity uh, also. Wait, wow. where's my wand? I need my wand. You do. <laughs> yes, you do. Where is your wand? It's right there. It's over here. Oh, I've showed you. Okay. I've shown you on the. I, oh, I, we've all seen your wand. Yeah, I know. I'm not happy yeah. about it either. No. Well, I'd go get it, but then I'd have to scoot away from the desk, and you'd see what's below the. We wouldn't waist. want that because then I'd have to float this boat all by myself. And yeah, I, I'm trying not to edit. Yeah, so I don't, you know. <laughs> Don't edit yourself out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, hey, if you're leaving in the fart noises, uh, you're going to leave everything in. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. I know. Uh, that's so you've got a roof on the house. Uh, did they yes. give you, and you wrote a, a nasty gram email. So tell us about yeah, the nasty gram. Yeah, and... so it was, it was just a uh, Friday. Nothing had been done, and it was really about a month that nothing had been done in the house. The block was up. All the exterior block walls were up, and uh, but there was no... Uh, there was nothing and and we finally got the trusses and we're celebrating over two weeks ago and we're like yes the trusses are here and they laid on the ground through a tropical depression, depression. and through rain every single day and it's and people will tell you the contractors will say that's not a big deal i mean as long as it's not for a six month period of time right and but still here we have them we were waiting for them and then suddenly nothing gets done and so after two weeks of that i i just wrote the email and i said look it would be okay and i know you've got other homes they're working on they do and this is a small builder um but they've been in business for a long time and generational and so on 
uh, but they've got 25 houses they're building, as I understand wow. the number. And I That's said, small. So, well, yeah, it is. They're not a big really? conglomerate, okay. no. And uh, I, I said, I, I know you're busy. I don't question that. But what I question is the decisions you're making based on who's less patient than I am. And <laughs> and all I said was, I I don't see the light at the end of the tunnel. And frankly, I'm having a hard time even putting together the tunnel. <laughs> so <laughs> I guess the damn tunnel is right the damn tunnel. Is. So yeah, I need to see the damn tunnel. Um, and they, by Monday they had a crew out there putting the, uh, putting the trusses up. And so Lisa said to me, so do you think they would have had the crew out there? Had you not written the email? And I said, don't know, don't care. It yeah. doesn't matter. They're out there. They've made some progress. Talked to the builder today, and he was great. And he said, "And hey, uh, pretty soon, I mean, within the next week or two, we can start digging the pool." Yes, nice. <laughs> so well, again, I'll believe it when I see it. Right. But after it sits well, for a month with really no progress, they said digging the pool. They didn't say finishing the pool. <laughs> yeah, that's true. But he said, which I thought was kind of odd. You got to put the roof on before you can dig the pool because you don't got, want guys sliding off the roof into the big, big pile of yeah. Uh, empty pool area, so right. I guess. I guess yeah. that's. I mean, it kind of makes sense. I guess. I, I guess, guess it does. So guess. anyhow, we'll, so, we'll see. It's know, coming along nice. See a little progress. It's interesting that you say that. So we we have not. It is what the the eighteenth, Saturday the eighteenth, and Whew. yeah, and we still haven't eighteen uh, of eighteenth of June. Sorry, eighteenth of June. We still haven't gotten our taxes I, done. I knew what month it was. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, our listeners may not. But we, okay. haven't, we haven't received our taxes yet. Our taxes have not been submitted. Oh. We haven't received our return, which we are getting one. I, Good I would for you. hope. Um, well, yeah. I mean, that honestly, that means another month of rent for Jennifer if we get it mm. so, for her yeah, business. Nice. You know, it's all because of her business that we get that. But anyway, all that to say, it hasn't been. And, and I'm getting frustrated, and we've – Jen has the relationship with the accountants because they're, she talks to them pretty much daily because they're the accountants for the business. Sure. They also do our personal. Got so it. I don't want to step on any toes and make – because I would, I would be raising holy hell at this point. Yes. So I, I had to explain the same thing to Jen. I said – she's like, everyone's in the same boat. And I said, yeah, but do you really think the people that aren't saying something aren't actually getting to the top of the line? We, They're doing we, exactly that. They're the, one, the are ones so who are right. being the nicest are yep. the ones who are going to be pushed to the bottom. So in one of the courses that I just wrote, it's about uh, customization. And it's kind of an interesting concept and one from a book I read years ago um, it, where you customize the process based on who your clients are <clears throat> Excuse me, and their value to you. And it's interesting when you look at it. Uh, just a real quick piece of it, because it really does go hand in hand with this. It, you rank all of your existing clients on a scale of one to five. Five is the most valuable. Mm -hmm. So they have bought multiple items from you. They uh, they pay a good profit. They speak positively about you. It's a great, you know, they're, they're just advocates of your business. They're fives. They're awesome. And down the scale, fours, threes, twos. And then the ones uh, are usually the one you spend an inordinate amount of time on. Mm-hmm. They complain the most, it's the squeaky wheel syndrome, and they buy the least. And they're a pain in the ass to deal with, and they always speak poorly about you to others. Right. Those are ones. We should not be spending the same amount of time or more on ones as we do on fives. Right. And conceptually, it makes perfect sense. But when you look in execution, most yeah. businesses mess no. that up completely. No. Yeah, exactly. You because know, of it's... the squeaky wheel syndrome. Exactly. And yeah. you know, it's, it's, that's human nature. I, I use that, oh, for sure. I, that, that, uh, I don't want to call it an analogy, but I guess it kind of is. It's the same thing with what I do. I, I am a consultant. I consult with businesses, uh, specifically car businesses, but business on digital marketing and, uh, you know, uh, processes and lead management and things like that. So I try to help Jennifer doing the same thing mm -hmm. with her business. Mm -hmm. And whether it's because she's my wife and we communicate differently, it's not necessarily a business thing or anything like that. We actually went out and hired someone mm -hmm. who does the exact same thing I do, but specializes in her business. And he is helping. 
I mean, everything that I know, but, but part of it too is it, but the point I was getting to is even when I'm looking at the business, mm -hmm. I go out and I explain to, to dealers, you need to do X, Y, and Z mm -hmm. because that's going to help you get the big picture. It's going to mm -hmm. help you with everything. What I know in my brain and what they might have, um, in their brain when they're listening is the fact that they're not going to be able to accomplish all of them. Mm -hmm. But as long as I share all of them, if they can pick up one or two, it'll be good because the same thing happens to me. I know all this stuff. Yep. I can tell you all day long what you should be doing. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean when I'm doing it for her business, I'm doing everything I should be doing. Yes. Same with we were talking about earlier. We were talking about marketing potty mouths. Yep. I know when I do a post that in the post should be, you know, certain keywords <laughs> should be certain hashtags, depending on where you're posting. It should have mm -hmm. a certain image. The image should have alt tags. Mm -hmm. The title of the image should be a certain way. And mm -hmm. you should have X number of things pointing to, you should have a call to action, all this junk, right? Yep. How, tell me how many times I've done that in any one of our potty mouse <laughs> posts. I mean, really, maybe except for the first ones. Well, but the way I look at it is we're building our catalog <laughs> for exactly. new people. Once they do come on, they'll say, what the hell? They have like 400 <laughs> blood yeah. tests. Well, I've, had, I've had a dream every once in a while that uh, one day you and I wake up and someone just wants to buy our catalog. <laughs> They're like, I could market this and, you know, we'll put it on <laughs> exclusively on Spotify and I'll give you both $10 million, you know? And I don't know how I went from a Minnesota Chicagoan, but. Yeah, you kind of did go right to the, and, and we'll make that happen too. And yeah. I, uh, Probably because I it's think going that to be a be... scam, and that's the voice of a scammer right there. Well, they will be Nigerian princes, but um, right, right. The <laughs> <laughs> but I, yeah, and and that would be great. But I think there are good ways for us. And again, listeners and and viewers, it's all about marketing and and making sure it works. You can have, a, and obviously, you people are either bored to death. Uh, and that's why you listen to Potty Mouse, or Absolutely. because that's why I do it. There's there's a modicum of modicum of entertaining modicum. entertainment value, and we'd like to think that whether it's true or not doesn't matter as long as you listen and watch. So <laughs> it's kind of like the it's the uh, uh, it's the uh, oh, and Nick, as you were talking about having some of the people maybe who would use our new uh, platform mm -hmm. and you could do your own podcast. That's very similar to us running a karaoke show and being a very okay <laughs> singer. And people go, I can do that. Yeah. <laughs> They're doing the same thing. Watching very true. And listening to potty balls. Yeah. Well, you <laughs> well, know, anybody can do that crap. That, that's true. It, yeah, we actually, so I don't think we're especially good at it, John. And, and, and I'm being serious. I don't no, no, think I we're know. especially good at it. No. However, they do say the average podcast only lasts one season mm -hmm. and we're on our fourth season Boom. so what well, are we we're think, doing something right i think it's the unique thing and, and again it's all thanks to our viewers and listeners but i think the unique thing i hope that comes across is we're genuinely friends i mean yeah. you and i talk about stuff before okay we should be recording this because it's yeah good stuff. Uh, every single time I, I don't know why i don't well now i know why i don't because now i have to have some production value beforehand sure, sure. but yeah we used to say why don't we just hit record right when we get on i've and i have done that in the past I have, and then sometimes we regret it and sometimes yeah. we don't because it's a something that we can't necessarily broadcast or right. has something to do with our work or yeah. you know, whatever but uh uh, anyway, yeah, I, but I think I'm hoping that that is the hook for people that it's is what causes folks to come back is is the uh, I, I struggle to say charisma, but between us, I think the relationship is is uh, is good, and I don't want to lose that. But I think we can, as we talked about before, and there's nothing wrong with saying this to our listeners and viewers that I, I think we can do it better, and and uh, I think we will. I think that's going to be our, our way moving forward. By the time we get to our 500th episode, people are going to say, I remember these guys when they sucked. Yeah. And I you was know, still a listener. <laughs> it's interesting you say that. So Peyton has started to listen to podcasts. And one of the ones, one of her favorites is the podcast by Aaron Minky called Lore. And it also has a television mm. show. It's a little dark, which I'm a little, uh, you know, but here's the thing. It's history. And I'm, mm. I'm all about getting her to learn history one way, shape, or form. And I don't care if it's talking about vampires or something like that because mm. he talks about lore and talks about those sort of things but puts it in the context of actual history. So mm. when he's talking about vampires as the example, and this is one of the recent ones, he's actually talking about the history of Vlad the Impaler and what part of the world he was from and what it used to be called and stuff like that. So she's learning something, yeah. but it's other stuff that's kind of, you know, piquing her interest. But yeah. 
he just met his milestone recently was the 200th episode. So Peyton looked at me and said, daddy, what, what episode are you guys on? Or what episode are you on? And I said, uh-huh. I think we're at 150, 160. We're actually at one. This will, this one will be 172. Woo. Yep. That's pretty awesome. It is pretty awesome. And so there are, uh, and that's, that's terrific. And I love the, I love the path you're taking or the tact you're taking in that it's not necessarily what she's learning. It's the fact that she's learning about history because that sets the stage to have a thirst for that stuff in a hopefully better context, you know, over time. But I, I've been listening to some of Thomas Sowell's stuff Mm -hmm. and that guy. He's just amazing, and and this is you know older recordings and so on. But he's so focused, and he's so on the um, uh, everything that he talks about is is historically based, right? And you find how that it just degrades over time if we so let it. Completely the opposite of yeah. potty mouths. Absolutely, it, yeah. That. To- that totally doesn't degrade. It stays the same because it can't get worse. And that, I think we, we find the basement floor right from the beginning. And that's what's Absolutely. Made us extraordinarily yeah. successful. Yeah. No, you're right. It, you know, it's, it, it's fascinating what information you can pull out and we're trying, we're struggling to find different ways to get Peyton to learn. We actually, <laughs> we actually had to pay for an extension. She was finished this past week. Um, finally with school, even though her school had finished, two weeks ago, Mm. but we had to pay for an extension because she was failing a class, which was Mm -hmm. nice that we could actually pay for that extension, Sure, but we paid for the extension. So she had another week to finish things up. Have Mm. no idea if she, if she did well, because she didn't let us read it before she turned anything in Mm. because they were Mm -hmm. a couple of papers, but you know, it's, it's, we're struggling trying to find, we're actually thinking about putting her back. We're not thinking we made the decision to put her back into regular school Mm. uh, because again, the homeschool thing worked really, really well when we were forced to do it for COVID and the first year we did it, it worked really well. The second year, it has been absolutely miserable. She went from being an AB student to getting nothing but C's so Ah. far with the exception of this one class she was failing Mm -hmm. this year. And, you know, part of it is just how busy we are. Sure. I I'm home. I'm home a little bit more, but not much more. And Jen trying to run a business. So, and we had Whitney, but the, Peyton and Whitney don't get along and there's, there's a, not a really good connection yeah. there. So not when it comes to school, they don't get along. Understood. So there's uh, you know, we're trying to figure out what to do next and, and the option. So we, we've decided to look into magnet schools. So there's a, a, um, a STEM magnet school. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry, steam, no STEM it's STEM, Yeah. but they have steam elements. Um, oh, so okay. science, technology, engineering, and math. With the A, it's got arts in it. In it, but the okay. other school is an arts magnet school. So it's you have to have two. I'll call them majors. That's not what they call them, but two things that you choose. And she wants to do visual art, and she wants to do theater. So mm-hmm. we're looking at those two schools if we can get her in. The problem is because this year she got straight C's, mm-hmm. it's going to be more difficult. Even sure. though she is already a grade ahead, and could probably be two grades ahead when it comes to her academics. So I, I don't know. We're, we're looking into it, but we're having a tough time. Mm. Uh, worst case scenario, she's going to go to a wonderful, beautiful Bellevue middle school here in Bellevue, Tennessee, but which awesome. is Nashville, but it's Nashville Metro schools. Uh, you know, it, it's tough as she progresses, as she gets older uh, and especially into the teen years, it, it's, it's difficult because things change. What works when they're, you know, in elementary school does not work the same in middle school right. because they cha- they mature, they change, right. they there are the stimuli is different and uh, are, are different, and and there are just a lot of things that that you have to have your eyes on, yeah. and I mean Michael went through a lot of things where he he was a different kid thirteen and fourteen, and uh, and we we did not get along great at that time, mm-hmm. um, but. My job is to be the dad, and right. so dad sometimes got to do the dad work, and so I I think that was um, once I figured that out, and once he figured out that I wasn't going to not be the dad, uh, then we we kind of saw eye to eye, and happily now, um, I think just now uh, at his thirty <laughs> first birthday next month, <laughs> now we're pretty tight. <laughs> that's good. That's good. 
So there's yes. hope for me. That's, there that's is a light at the end of the yeah. tunnel. It may be a really long tunnel, but we'll Maybe see. Maybe a really long tunnel. No, I, Peyton and I get along fantastically. She's but a I great do girl. Have to, I, like I do her. have to be dad. Well, you do, but I, I love that um, you, you have a unique relationship with her. Um, she's smart, and she she's has... She's very too smart. Uh, she, she, I would... And I... When she was younger, I would have called it precocious because mm-hmm. she's, and I mean it in a good way because now is she's called asshole. She is not. <laughs> she's quick witted and yeah. she doesn't miss much. And no. anyway, she's just fun. I, I enjoy Peyton a lot and she's a, she's a smart girl, but that brings with it its own set of challenges. Yes, it does. Yeah. So. You, when you hope for someone, I, I hope that she would be smarter than me. I really did. When she was born, mm-hmm. I got my wish. Unfortunately, <laughs> way to go. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, no, serious. In all seriousness, I think I, the, I'm pushing more towards the STEM school because even though it, it still has art in it, it still has stuff that she'll do. I think the arts are going to burn her out and they're not going to challenge her nearly as enough and enough for her to be interested. She needs just like I did when I was a kid needs to be challenged. Yeah. It's the stimulus, I, especially exactly. the challenge. Yeah. You're right. So I think the you're STEM right. school and the other part of it too, is that STEM school feeds right into a school we have here called Hume Fogg which for anyone who's been in downtown Nashville, it's actually downtown Nashville. It's on Broadway. Oh. It's, the, it's a castle. It looks like a big old castle. It's a beautiful okay. school. It's one of the top schools in the country. Wow. One of the top public schools in the country. And I would love for her to be able to get in. And actually, yeah. one of, a couple of Jen's employees went there, and they're phenomenal people. And so, so what, what uh, they have to qualify? They have to test in? or what's Yeah, the... you have to be. Well, no, if you go to this STEM school, the STEM middle school. Yeah. You, it's a feeder. It goes right in. Oh, as long it. as you keep your grades up and you don't flunk out, you can, you're fed right in. But yeah, if wow. you were to move to Nashville and you wanted to get into the school, mm-hmm. you'd have to test in. Wow. If you could even find a spot. Wow. Cool. So now would be a good time if we want her to go for her to, because we probably will still have to get her to test in, but she'll have no problem testing into the middle school. Does she, I mean, is she aware of, obviously aware, is that something that's a goal for her or not Which, yet? What getting into that school? The, either she's interested in both. Oh, okay. Yeah. Right. The the only cool. problem we have, honestly, which isn't a huge problem because Jen owns her own business, so she can set her own schedule. Uh, is the STEM school is we live in West Nashville, and the STEM school is in East Nashville. Oh gosh. Okay. Yeah. The art school is in Nashville, so it's not. It's still on the west side, but it's still a little ways away. Mm-hmm. But it's not nearly as far as the STEM school. Well, I think is, I so. think if you if you just uh, get a nice uh, uh, piece of uh, property and build another house, I think that we're looking at that too. Uh, yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, yeah, I no, can we highly recommend it. It's yeah. really a good idea. Well, that leads me to my second question, yes. uh, and then we're going to have to wrap it up because we're. Well, it's we're about time we get to I the know, second question. Right? Man, that's, oh. second question. There's yeah. a second from the first. Um, <laughs> When you, your builder, so what did, do they build a specific set of houses or could this be something where you pick a design and then you go to them and say, Hey, build this. Yeah. It's no, uh, well, no, let me qualify that. I'm sure. Yes. He could do that. They had a certain number of floor plans though, that they're, they have expertise in. These okay. are the plans they are used to building. We saw a model and honestly, we, and we've, been through houses before i mean i know despite my fresh looks um i am older and uh we (laughs) we we've been through i mean models and for years this is one we walked in and we said this is perfect this is exactly what we need it's the the separated rooms you know one bedroom on one side two on the other side Mm -hmm. um of the kitchen great room uh, little dine. I mean, it's and we're empty nesters, so we don't need a big place. We'll have two bedrooms and an office, and then the pool in the back. And we're just kind of this is per- oh, and a three car garage because damn, yeah, uh, right. Uh, yeah. The D word. Uh oh, he's yeah. Pissed. I know what. <laughs> what? No, I'm not. This is a happy damn. Uh, that was the how much extra is the three car garage? And he told me, and I'm going do it, <laughs> it was just that quick. It wasn't even thinking because we've had one. And once you have one, it's really tough to uh, yeah. change back. But so he could have, to answer your question, he could have built anything. Um, we were able to customize this a little bit, um, remove the door, change the swing of French doors. Um, 
I added a few things that just kind of made sense to mm-hmm. us. And uh, so anyway, it's it's we tried not to do too much to mess with it because he said there's another couple who is building the same floor plan and their house is almost double the price of ours because of all the change in mods they made. Really? <laughs> yes. Wow. So, good luck reselling that if you ever have to. Yeah. Know? And we don't plan to, but uh, I asked Lisa, I said, with real estate prices where they are, so what would the value have to be for us to say, okay, we're going to sell it and build another one? <laughs> and she goes, don't you even think about it. <laughs> well, but honey, what if it's, don't even, okay, fine. <laughs> so we, in all seriousness, we went for uh, last weekend. Last weekend was beautiful. So we went for Jeep rides both days. Yeah. And um, so on Sunday, Jen came with us and we did this big tour around the area. We have some beautiful roads about w- yes. around where we live. Yes. And uh, we stopped and got some ice cream. And then we were by this. So the whole reason we live in this house is there was another house that we, Jen saw by accident on one of our weekend drives like seven years ago. That was for sale, and she really, really wanted it, and I really wanted it, but we didn't think we could afford it, Mm. and I didn't look into it. I should have because I found out very shortly thereafter I could have afforded double what that house was. (laughs) Yeah, so we kind of of kicked ourselves because it's it's off – it, it's in Nashville proper. It's in Davidson County, but it's Mm -hmm. on the top of one of the big hills. So it's it's almost on top – it would – around here they would almost call it a mountain, but it's not. You know, it's it's the rolling mm-hmm. hills, but it's way up on top. It's way back in the woods. It's on five acres. Wow. And I mean, it's it is a perfect neighborhood and it's kind of our dream neighborhood. And so this last weekend, we went up there just to see it again because we hadn't been up there in a really long time. And so we drive up there, drive down the road. We go past the house and we're like, there it is. And then we look and on the other <laughs> side is another five acre lot. No house on it. Five acre lot for sale. Wow. And we're like, oh, shit. Is it stupid, expensive, or have uh, you Well, into let's it? put it this way. If we would have, well, it's the same price as what that house was seven years oh, ago. Oh, God. <laughs> Just it. for the five wow. acre lot. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> but it's still not, it's not horrible. Sure. I mean, we could put a, we could buy that, put a nice side, because we don't really want a big house, mm-hmm. but, you know, we could put a nice house there mm-hmm. and be perfectly happy. Yep. Unfortunately, or fortunately, it's there's a contingency on it already. So someone's oh. already got a, a contract. But wow. yeah, it was. Uh, <laughs> so you say buy, that we were we were both kind of going, for... oh shit, here we go again. <laughs> well, you know what? It's it's always fun though to kind of think about that stuff. The question is, what are you going to do with it if it does come to fruition? You know, and that's yeah. with a lot of things, I guess. Dreaming is True. great, but when at some True. point you can go. Uh, this is actually something we could do, and uh, yeah, right okay, now we can think about it. Yeah, but you no, know, understood. if if Jen's business, like if Jen's business were were going really, 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 really well right now, yeah, we yeah. probably would. Because mm-hmm. here's our goal, and we do not want to sell this house. Mm-hmm. We like this house. We love this house. We like this neighborhood, but we still want our. It's still not quite what we want, if that mm-hmm. makes sense. Mm-hmm. So our dream, if you want to call it a dream is to keep this house and build something else that we can live in, whether that's a second home sure. and we still live here, or we buy a home and we rent this place out. How far is it from your existing house? 10 minutes. Oh, gee. <laughs> yeah. that's, and that's where you think about it. So, well, this is our weekend cottage. Okay, well, we'll pack in, up it, the car. And ex- in that great. case. You get in, you drive 10 minutes, and there you yeah. are. <laughs> no, in that case, we would be living in that house and renting this one out. But sure, sure. we have talked about buying property between... Uh, Craig and Mona and ourselves, which is oh, two cool. hours. So go See, two hours onto the plateau, build a cabin that we can all share. And that makes sense to me. Uh, it, what doesn't make sense to me, and even though for a lot of people, because we lived in Michigan, for a lot of folks, they had cottages up in. So if you're, I got to do this the right way. If Detroit is here, mm-hmm. um, they were like up here in yeah. Charlevoix and. Potoski, Potoski, and, and yeah. some of those towns. And they would drive up there every weekend. And it's a yeah. five-hour one-way drive without traffic. And you know how it goes. On uh, uh, Thursday night or Friday morning coming out of Detroit, there's always traffic because there are hundreds of people, thousands probably, who are going up there just for the weekend. And you go up for you know two days and come back and go, 
Well, that was relaxing. What the heck yeah. were we thinking? So, well, yeah, I mean, a cottage or whatever would be awesome or a place where yeah. you can kick back and relax. But you know, it's, it's got to really be funny. a smart drive. What really funny is a lot of my family in Minneapolis, in the Twin Cities mm-hmm. area, one, a lot of them already live on a lake or a river. Yes. And then they have cabins on a lake, mostly in Wisconsin. Really? So they don't go up north. They go to Wisconsin. <laughs> We're going out east. Yeah, we're going. We're going to the lake. Um, which one? Yeah, <laughs> you live on one. And, and on that uh, note, folks, I, I knew that too. And real quickly, because I have yeah. a buddy whose brother built a house on a lake in Wisconsin. He lived in Minneapolis. And you're right. It's a. It was like a. This is our weekend thing, and it was yeah. 45 minutes. And they go away, every single weekend. It. Yep. But it's, it's a culture crazy. of five hours. Yeah, it's about yeah. two and a half, three. Yeah, oh, most of okay. them. Depending upon where they are. Yeah, exactly. Well, you can exactly. be over the border in an hour, less than an yeah, hour less from than Minneapolis. Hour. Yeah. So, anyway. Uh, on that depending note. Depending on traffic, too. On, on that, that note. note. On that note, <laughs> folks, head up to pottymiles.com and uh, check out all our socials, all that junk. Oh, he's doing music. On live. that note. <laughs> oh, I see what you did there. I see what you did that. there. Waiting for that. Yeah. Anyway, folks. <laughs> Uh, my music isn't playing, John. Da, I don't know. Da, 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 it's not playing. Da, I can't. Da, da, I can't lead da, us out, guys. We, so here's oh, the problem. No. Now we're going to have to continue for hours we're until have you to can continue. finally get the music to go. Right. Exactly. <laughs> you, you're going to be editing. I'm going. No, I'm if not. If I was just learned it on the piano, then you wouldn't have to bring it up. Well, let's just say don't 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 don't. I can't do the music. I don't even know it well enough. I they thought you were going to do uh, the... Uh, <laughs> they, they hate this. <laughs> <laughs> and, folks, I think that's it. Have a wonderful <laughs> week. I, well, I wanted to end on that, but you, you just kept going. Um, I can't help I, myself. Yeah, I don't know why. It's, it's playing on the preview, but it's not playing on the live. So, see, these are the things that we need to work out, everyone. You know, really smart people would doing production would do this <laughs> and practice before they go live but not us now this They're is just... the only thing that's preventing us from being multi-millionaires Damn yeah it. that's that's the only thing <laughs> bye everybody bye <laughs>